What is it that defines us? Is it our brain? If so, then what is your brain? For sure, more than just a collection of independent parts. But where does my I come from? Let's start by looking at the tiniest parts of the brain. At the beginning of the 20th century, over 100 years ago, pioneering neuroscientist Kajal showed us the most beautiful pictures of neurons, the tiny but crucial elements of the brain that had never been seen before. If we look at the neurons, we directly see that neurons are not alone. The primary property of neurons is that they want to connect. Neurons are connected to other neurons by means of their dendritic and axonal connections, with synapses being the connection sites between neurons. Through these dendritic trees, axons and synapses information can be sent between neurons by means of chemical and electrical pulses. But as we said, neurons are not alone. They have many connections to other neurons, forming one integrated network. Millions of neurons form local networks that are together interconnected by means of short-range connections. However, besides these short-range connections, some neurons also have very long connections, projecting information to other sites of the brain. As a result, on both the micro scale as well as on the macro scale, the brain is one big, always active neural network. A complete description of all neuronal interactions of a neural system is called a connectome, a detailed roadmap of all connections of the brain. What if we could make such a roadmap of the human brain? Such a map would provide tremendous new insight into the flow of information between brain regions. It would provide fundamental new knowledge about the workings of our brain. The human brain consists of an estimated 80 billion neurons and around 10,000 times more connections. The total length of all axonal projections is estimated at 176,000 kilometers. That's half the distance to the moon. But what information is stored in all these connections and synaptic terminals? We don't know, but there are theories. Some say that everything of who you are is stored in these connections, our memories, whether we're in love, yes or no, our problems, and perhaps our mind. What defines you as you is stored in the information flow between the neurons of the brain. In a way, we could compare the brain to a city. In a big city, there are millions of people who live and work in houses, shops, malls, etc. There are hundreds of roads who keep all these buildings connected, providing people the opportunity to go from one place to another. It is this flow that provides character to the city. It is not just one property that defines New York as New York or Paris as Paris. Instead, it is the flow that gives a city its personality. In the same way, we could hypothesize that it's not individual neurons or individual connections that make our brain, but rather the functional state or flow of information in our connectome that makes us who we are. Our brain is the city of our mind. In this line of thought, change in this flow, our mind will lead to a change in our brain city. Similar to this is the constant remodeling of New York City, with every street corner, people working on renovating buildings, making new roads, etc. In a similar way, our brain city is under constant change. New experiences, new memories, our current state of mind, the future plans we make, they all have to be stored in the connections and interactions between neurons. For this, new neuronal buildings and axonal streets are made, or perhaps old buildings are removed. And just like in any other city, things can go wrong. There might be accidents and traffic jams. Traffic can go slow or fast. Buildings and city blocks can lose their function when they're not used and maintained. Analogous to this is that many brain disorders might be related to disconnectivity of the connectome. Some roads may be placed incorrectly. Damage to important highways can lead to a disruption of global traffic, or halted maintenance might lead to a global change in information flow. Modern theories indeed suggest that several psychiatric and neurological disorders 
may relate to affected brain connectivity.